Hey guys, um, a lot of my friends, well, let me, let me start from the beginning. All my friends are mix engineers because I spend so much time in the studio. We only get to see each other when we're in each other's studios, but uh, that's a good thing. I like having all my friends be engineers. Uh, a, a lot of the music I'm listening to nowadays, people are widening the low end, particularly the 808. I'm gonna show you some techniques for doing that. There's some good tutorials out there already and I learned a little bit from those. Uh, but I went straight to the source, Jason Joshua. Uh, I love the way he does it. And so um, this is inspired by Jason, let's say, okay? I don't want him mad at me. But, uh, he talked about it on the show. So if you watch one of the episodes with uh, the newest episode with him in it, he'll, he'll give you a lot of information. So I'm gonna I'm show you three, three plugins that I use uh, for various reasons and you can see why. Let's check it out. Here's, here's the 808. Perfectly mono, even though, even though we see a stereo, it's actually in mono. This plugin is made by Matthew Lane, the guy that makes uh, Dr. MS. Um, Interesting thing about Matthew, he's got two plugins. One's got 4,000 knobs and the other one's got one knob. And the one knob was pretty good, so I find that funny. Check this out, without, with. Now if you're sitting in the middle, or, or you got earbuds on while you're listening to this, you'll, you'll hear a subtle, and, and it's a wide enough space that you can put the vocals and sit those in there pretty nicely. You can put a, a regular kick drum in that in that middle space now. And then uh, if you've got a synth bass part, um, you, you've got the option to put it, put it in the middle or make it a little wider and the 808 a little narrower or vice versa. So you've got, you've got all kinds of options. And playing with a low end on a mix is a relatively new thing to me. This Matthew Lane, gosh, it's just so beautiful. Now here's here's um, here's one a little more advanced. Now we're only widening from zero to about 100 cycles, and then up to about 320, and then up here we're not doing anything. But you can do this too. So here's without it, with it. Looks like I'm a little lopsided. Let's see. There we go. It's closer. This thing's got a lot of a lot of parameters you can adjust. I think this is my favorite overall. All of these have uses. If you keep up with the show, you know I'm a fan of Joy Sturgis. This is a Joy Sturgis sound um, tones. I think what he says, Joy Sturgis tones. Um, and this one's probably the one that you can get the most radical with. Man, that puts it in another zip code. <laughs> let's do that a little again. That is so cool. You know what? Let's let's try putting it this way and then backing it down like. Then you've got different modes. So we've gone from from subtle to a good compromise and just crazy wide. All of these collapse down to mono extremely well, so you don't have to really worry about that too much. Check it out. And and uh, this also works really great on synth basses. Like say you've got a an old school kick where it's got a real pointy attack to it, and and it really should be mono. You can set your your bass information on the outside of that, and uh, that works really well too. And remember, more music is consumed on YouTube than all the other forms of streaming combined. And most people, when they're watching YouTube or listening to YouTube, they have their laptops and they got their earbuds in. So this is really a good technique to reach those people. All right.